Joel Klatt rejoins us to talk some more about the college football playoff rankings. And Joel, we had Bruce Feldman on earlier. I asked him this question. I feel like we need to ask you as well. What do you make of Ohio State being jumped by UCF? Well, I, I think a lot of it had to do with the nature of that game against Maryland, obviously. Um, and, and that also Ohio State, and I've heard this a couple of times, so this is not an original thought. I just think it's a really good thought. I think Ohio State is being measured against their historical success while a team like UCF or Washington State is not being measured against their historical success, or their historical success is not in a place where we say, oh, but this is not quite the team uh, that they should be. Um, those teams are not being viewed that way, and Ohio State is. And, and I don't think that that's very fair, because I think Ohio State has earned the right to be in a better position, in particular above LSU. And I think that they probably should be above UCF as well. Uh, let, let me give you a quick stat on this. There are 44 Power 5 teams, guys, that this year, uh, and there are 65 teams if you include Notre Dame, so 44 of the 65, that have played back-to-back -back road games on consecutive weeks. So true road games, consecutive weeks, they played. 44. Only five of them have gone 2-0 and over the course of those two weeks. Florida's one of them, Ohio State's one of them, Iowa, Northwestern, and Georgia Tech. So what Ohio State did in the last couple of weeks should not be minimized. And what we're doing right now and what the committee is doing is minimizing that. Think about that. 44 teams. Now, here's another thing that I think is very interesting. They're the only team in the top 10 outside of UCF. So again, just the Power 5 teams. They're the only team that had one of those sequences on their schedule. Back-to-back -back road games on consecutive weeks. So the fact that they struggled and ultimately won, I don't think should be held against them. Uh, when you look at the record of all these teams in that situation, just to give you an instant, all the Pac-12 teams, there's 11 of those teams that had one of those sequences in their schedule. They went a combined 4-18 and 18 in those games. 4-18. and 18. The only Pac-12 team that did not have back-to-back -back road games on consecutive weeks this year, Washington State. I think there's a reason why you're seeing some of the t these teams where they are in the standings, and I don't think that should be held against the Ohio State Buckeyes. You know, it's interesting. We were also talking with Bruce about the comparison to Oklahoma and really kind of this same notion, this idea that Ohio State, we expect them to have a good defense. We don't expect Oklahoma to have a good defense. And so when Oklahoma goes out and gives up 40 to Kansas, everyone just says, well, that's Oklahoma. But when Ohio State gives up 51 to Maryland, people say, what's going on there? And judge them negatively and, again, allow a team like UCF to go above them. I mean, we see the comparison here between Ohio State and Oklahoma. Certainly, Ohio State has a better win than Oklahoma yeah. does at Penn State versus at Iowa State. Do you believe that Oklahoma is being judged differently than the Buckeyes are? Oh, yeah. Absolutely, no question. And this is human nature. This is why, again, this is, this is a flawed way to rank teams. We just have 13 individuals because the human nature weighs way too uh, big of a, a part of what's going on. I think if we had some ability to balance out these humans in that room with some sort of computer metrics, I think that it would give us a better sense of what's going on so that we weren't swayed by what we think Ohio State should be versus what they are. There's no doubt that Oklahoma gets a pass. And I'll go in a step further, by the way. I happen to believe that Kyler Murray is in the lead for the Heisman Trophy by a nose over, over Tua and Will Greer and Gardner Minshew and Dwayne Haskins. But why isn't Dwayne Haskins given the carrot that Kyler Murray is? Because Dwayne Haskins is going out there with a bad defense just like Kyler Murray and having to carry his team to a 10-1 record. He's also a guy that has four... 400-yard passing games. He went out there and ran for multiple touchdowns last week when he had to. Three different times they were down by 14 points, and yet no one talks about the fact that he brought them back each and every time and ultimately won the game on the road in the consecutive week of a back-to-back -back road games. No one's talking about that. Everyone's just like, man, Ohio State. So, yeah, I think that Ohio State is be being judged very unfairly, which is shocking based on the fact that their athletic director is one of the 13 people in the committee room. Now, I, I get it. When they're being discussed, he has to leave the room. But, boy, that's awkward. You leave the room, and then you come back in, and you're like, whoa, <laughs> what just happened to my team?